Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons to another Transformers Breakdown video. As you all probably already know, the Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer 2 dropped, and man, it was definitely worth the wait. We have a ton of new footage to talk about, so allow me to shed some light on all the little Easter eggs and details of that you might have missed when watching. So sit back, relax, and grab your favorite snack since this video is going to be a long one. Uh, he eats planets. So like, way bigger than a planet. All right, so the trailer opens up with several shots of the Maximals hanging around in the jungle, while a voiceover from Optimus Primal plays saying, For centuries our kind has stayed hidden on Earth, but darkness has found us again. Now, with Primal saying that darkness has found us again, implies that this darkness has found them before, and we will get into what exactly that darkness is in a bit. Now something that is very interesting is when Primal says that darkness has found us again, is that we can see a thunderstorm over New York, and this appears to be the same storm that we saw in the first trailer. Some other things to point out in this first segment is the shot of the Maximals walking in the river. Here we can see the Maximal engineer Rhinox, and the Maximal scout Cheetor whose voice actor was recently revealed to be Zimbabwean actor Tange Teresa. Now, if you look closely in front of Cheetor, we can see what appears to be Optimus Prime's foot, evident by its shape and blue color. And it's likely to be Optimus's foot since in the same shot we can see RC Mirage and Noah. This scene must take place sometime after the boss go to Peru for the first time to meet the Maximals, since both factions seem to be friendly with each other. Now, the last thing to point out in these handful of scenes is this character right here. This is Reek and he will be played by Toby and Wigway. His role in the film is still somewhat a mystery, but we do know that he will be one of the main human characters for the movie. Now moving on to the next set of shots, here we can see Optimus Prime in this bus yard. Now, you might be wondering, why is Prime here? And, well, the likely reason is because he's here to hunt down Transit. Now, Transit is going to be one of the Terracons in this film, with him being voiced by John DiMaggio. And according to set photos and his official control art render, we can see that he will transform into a MCI classic New York Transit bus. And by watching this shot, it looks like Optimus is going to need to find out which bus is Transit. And this is pretty cool, since we rarely, if ever, see a Transformer that turns into a bus, especially for a live-action movie. So I'm definitely hyped to see what the filmmakers have in store for us here. Now, the last thing I want to point out in this bus yard scene is that Optimus has an Autobot logo on the side of his cab, just like he did in the original 1984 cartoon. Now, this is interesting since the vehicle used on set, the 1987 Freightliner FLA semi-truck, does not have the Autobot logo on the side of the cab. However, the CGI version of the truck does, so it will be interesting to see how this discrepancy will play out in the film. Now moving on from this shot and into the next, we can see Optimus Prime listening to Optimus Primal. And then it cuts to this crystal that shoots out a beam of light into the sky, with it then cutting to a shot of space where this massive object is coming to destroy a planet. So what the heck is going on here? Well, during all this, we get a voiceover from Optimus Primal saying, Prime, this is about the fate of all living things. Unicron is coming. Now, remember that darkness that Primal was talking about? Well, that darkness is Unicron, and that giant thing that we see about to destroy that planet is him, and he will be voiced by Coleman Domingo. Now, for those of you who might not be familiar with Unicron, he is the biggest and baddest Transformer to ever exist. He was first introduced to us in the 1986 film The Transformers The Movie. He is the Chaos Bringer, and he's dedicated to consuming the multiverse. His massive form is powered by the consumption of planets, moons, stars, and even the very fabric of existence. Now, this isn't the first time Unicron appeared in a live-action Transformers movie. That title would be given to his incarnation in Transformers The Last Night where he transformed into our planet Earth. Now, you might be wondering, how can Unicron both be the Earth in a previous movie, and now here be his own separate entity? Well, that is because Transformers Rise of the Beast takes place in its own separate continuity. You know how Tobey Maguire's Andrew Garfield's and Tom Holland's Spider-Man are all from different universes? Well, the live-action Transformers films did something similar. The first five Transformers films directed by Michael Bay are all part of their own separate universe, while the 2018 Bumblebee movie directed by Travis Knight and Rise of the Beast directed by Stephen Capel Jr. take place in a new universe.
universe. And any other future live-action Transformers movies will fall into this new rebooted continuity. So hopefully that clears things up for those of you who were confused. Now moving back onto the footage I previously touched upon, we can see that the CGI has been cleaned up for the scene where Prime talks to Primal. However, the CGI on Prime's face doesn't look 100% finished yet. In the shot after this where we see this crystal, we can see that Elena, who is a museum worker, is studying it when it accidentally activates. Now this crystal thing is not a crystal at all, but actually a transwarp key. And this device will be the MacGuffin of the movie. Its role and function has not been revealed to us just yet. However, we do know that it will somehow end up at a museum, which the Terracons in the previous trailer destroyed, presumably to steal it. Now, in the shot after this, we can see Optimus looking at the beacon that the transwarp key created. It's unknown when this scene takes place or how long it took for Optimus to spot it after it activated. However, a theory of mine is that this beacon is likely what alerted the Terracons to come to Earth, but we won't really know for sure until the film comes out. Now, the last scene here to discuss is this shot of Elena, and behind her we can see fire, this structure, and all this grass. With these details in mind, this scene must take place sometime after the Terracons leave the museum, since in the scene where Scourge impales Bumblebee, we can notice the same grass, fire, and structure. With that said, let's now move on to the next part of the trailer, and here we can see a 1994 title card. This means that this film is set seven years after the Bumblebee movie which took place in 1987. And in the next shot of the trailer, we once again have the scene of Mirage kidnapping Noah. However, now we have a ton of extra footage. When Noah gets into Mirage, we now have this cool scene of the Autobot logo appearing on the control panel. But the main thing that everyone is talking about is the scene where Mirage takes Noah to the Autobots' safe house. And there are a handful of things to take note of here. First off, we can see Noah picking up this pipe to defend himself. This scene takes place right before the shot shown to us in the Super Bowl trailer of Mirage becoming friends with Noah. After this shot, we get to see a scene of Optimus walking in and questioning Mirage on why he would bring a human to their safe house. Now this shot of Optimus likely takes place after this scene in the previous trailer where he drives up to the safe house, evident by him fully completing his transformation here. Now something that you likely noticed when watching this trailer is that Optimus is not happy to see Noah, with him picking him up and examining him after scolding Mirage. And you might think that this is out of character for Prime since in almost all of his incarnations he's kind and friendly with the humans, so what gives? Well you see the main arc in this film is Optimus Prime's character arc, specifically his view of humanity. According to the filmmakers, at the start of the film Prime just wants to leave Earth and return to Cybertron, with him not caring much about the humans. However, over the course of the film Prime starts to learn more about Earth and humanity, and eventually he comes to the point that humanity is worth fighting for, thus completing his arc and transforming into the Optimus that we all know and love. Now something cool to point out in this scene is this shot where Optimus goes up to Noah. This shot appears to be a homage to the scene in the 2007 film where Optimus introduced himself to Sam Witwicky and Michaela Baines. Now, the last thing that I would like to point out in this scene is that we can see Bumblebee and RC behind Noah. And if you look closely, we can see that RC has a driver. Now, this is not a human, but actually a hologram. You see, Transformers have the ability to create holographic drivers for themselves so they don't attract unwanted attention. The incarnation of RC in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen also had a holographic driver. However, it looks like the Rise of the Beast incarnation had her holographic driver based off of the hologram that RC from Transformers Prime had. With those scenes squared off, let's now move on to the next part of the trailer. And here we can see Battle Trap hooking onto Nightbird so we can turn around and fire some missiles at RC and Wheeljack. And this is absolutely awesome since we are seeing Transformers fighting in completely different ways that we haven't seen before. In the next shot, it's the same shot that we have seen before of the Autobots and Terracons fighting. However, now it has been extended and here we can see Scourge shoot at this mountain, in addition to this rock hitting Nightbird causing her to flip in the air and transform. And this is the clear shot that we have gotten so far of a robot mode on screen. However, we do have this piece of control art showing off her design. And I gotta say, I'm really digging the ninja aesthetic that she has. Now moving on to the next scene, we have Optimus saying, this is not our war. And then it cuts to the Terracons getting out of the water. Now this begs the question of who Optimus is saying this to. The trailer makes the viewer think that he's saying this to Air Razor, since we see her respond to Optimus just a few seconds later saying, Optimus, we must trust each other to protect the home we all share. However, this is impossible since Prime is saying this is not our war when he's in New York. 
and Air Razor is saying her response when she's in the jungle. So, if he's not talking to Air Razor, then who is he talking to? Well, we actually know the answer thanks to Empire Magazine. They recently interviewed the director of the film, Stephen Capel Jr., and in the article they posted, there were some screen caps of the movie, one of which was this one of Optimus and Bumblebee standing. And if you take a look at the background, we can see this tree and some buildings. And these background elements here match up with this clip of Prime speaking. So therefore, Prime must be speaking to Bumblebee in this scene, likely about how the Maximals' war with Unicron is not theirs to partake in. With that said, let's now talk about the clip of the Terracons getting out of the water. And as we know, in the previous trailer, we saw three escape pods crashing down to Earth, which are now officially confirmed to be Scourge, and Nightbird, and Battle Trap. However, something that is interesting is that Transit is nowhere to be seen. This means that he either is already on Earth when the other Terracons arrive, or he comes to Earth later on in the movie. Now, the last thing that I want to discuss is that it seems like the Terracons might already have their vehicle modes, evident by Battle Trap appearing to have the bumper from his GMC Topkick C70,000 tow truck. However, I'm not 100% sure until we get some better footage. With that said, let's now move on to the next segment, and here we can see Cheetor pounce on Mirage. Something interesting here is that we now know what Mirage's blaster looks like, and it appears to have a bit of a resemblance to the Path Blaster from the Fall of Cybertron game. As for when this scene takes place, it must be before the Autobots and Maximals join forces, and this can be proven since in the Empire Magazine article, we got this screen cap. And for those of you who have keen eyes, you would know that this scene is from the first trailer where Prime confronted Primal, and in that, Cheetor, Mirage, and RC were absent. So now having their addition to this scene is just awesome. Now taking a look at the next shot, here we have the scene of the Autobots meeting the Maximals on top of this mountain. As for how the Autobots got up here, we can see this Fairchild C-119 flying boxcar in the background. This character is the heroic Autobot transport Stratosphere. Not too long ago, we got a reveal of what his robot mode looks like, and it's absolutely sick. And ever since his Revenge of the Fallen figure released, I always want to see Stratosphere make his live-action debut, so I cannot wait to see this guy on the silver screen. Now taking a look at this shot, we can see Unicron about to devour a planet. Now, though this planet looks a lot like Earth, I don't think it actually is, but actually the planet that we saw towards the beginning of the trailer. And if we boost the saturation up for that clip, we can see that the planet Unicron is about to eat has vegetation on it, just like the planet that we see here. As for who this planet is home to, I believe it's the home of the Maximals and Predacons. Since in the Empire Magazine interview, Stephen Capel Jr. stated that the Maximals originated from their own planet, and that they traveled to Earth to protect something really important from Unicron. Now, with this in mind, in addition to knowing that Primal said that a darkness has found them again, and with him confirming that darkness is Unicron, the planet that we see here must have been the homeworld of the Beast Wars characters before it was eaten by the Chaos Bringer. Now moving along to the next segment of clips, we have one of Noah asking how big Unicron is, with Mirage telling him that he must be bigger than a planet because, well, he eats planets. This scene is intercut with footage of Scourge meeting Unicron's face. Though we can't see much of it, which was likely done by design, we can see that he has yellow eyes instead of those iconic green ones. Another thing that is interesting is that there is this Terracon logo on this arch. That's because Unicron is responsible for the creation of the Terracons, and if you look closely at the logo itself, it looks a lot like Unicron's head, which was done by design. Now taking a look at the next scene, we have this amazing one of Bumblebee jumping out of Stratosphere, and there's a ton of stuff to talk about here. First off, if you look at Bumblebee, we can see that his head design is a little bit different. The parts on the side of his head are now angled down a while before they were straight. Another change that was made was the removal of the little piece that covers his mouth. However, the main thing in this scene is that Bumblebee is missing the Autobot logo on his head, evident by this silver patch. Now, his missing logo isn't a CGI error, but actually a big plot point of the film. You see, Scourge is characterized to be a trophy hunter, and once he kills his prey, he claims their faction logo and puts it on himself, evident by his truck mode having all these faction symbols on it. As we know, Scourge goes on to impale Bumblebee, and it's likely this is the scene where B gets his Autobot logo taken 
away from him. As for some other things to point out in this scene, we can see all these fears that Bumblebee goes on to blast with his double arm cannons which is a first for him to have in a live action film. As for what these things are, I believe that they are drop pods for the Terracon army to use to enter into battle, since later in the trailer we see hundreds of Terracon soldiers attacking our heroes. As for where these drop pods are coming from, it appears to be outside of Earth's atmosphere. As for who's sending them is unknown. Moving on to the next shot, we finally got our first good look at the Terracon leader himself, with him saying, in the end, everything you cared for will be consumed. As we all probably know, Scourge is definitely referring to Unicron. As for who Scourge is talking to, based on the time of day, it could be to Optimus after the two get up from their fall, but I'm not 100% sure about this. After this scene, we get a shot of Noah with his family, and after, a shot of Noah with Elena, which appears to be set inside a stratosphere's cargo hold. Moving on to the next shot, we have the scene where Bumblebee gets impaled. Something that is very interesting is that the CGI for this scene has been completely revamped. Compared to trailer 1, the differences are night and day. We now can see Battletrap putting his leg on Optimus's back to keep him at bay, while in the previous trailer he was absent. But the main thing to take a note of here is that we can see Bumblebee swinging this weapon at Scourge. Now upon examining the weapon, it looks a lot like Optimus Prime's Energon sword evident by the orange tip and blue lights. However, if you look closely, we can see that this weapon has a hilt, which means that Bumblebee is wielding Optimus Prime's Energon Axe, which is a weapon that we didn't even think Prime was going to have in this film. The only other time he had an axe in live action would be in Transformers Dark of the Moon, and this new axe seems like it might have taken a few design cues from the Dark of the Moon axe when it comes to this piece right here. Now, taking a look at the next scene, we have a shot where Elena and Noah are in the museum running away from explosions. Now, though the trailer does not give us much context as to what's going on here, a toy may hold the key. You see, a little while ago, a toy for Freezer, who will be one of the Terracons in this film, hit retail. Being part of the Studio Series line, his figure came with a backdrop, and as we can see, his backdrop is of the museum, so maybe he is the one responsible for exploding this wall. Moving on to the next scene, we have this shot of Noah and Elena looking into this opening. It is rumored that this thing is the Maximal Caves. As for what it will be used for is unclear to us at this time, but it has been speculated that this is where the Maximals locked up the Predacons. With this scene squared off, we have this one of Elena saying, maybe there's another way to save our home. She's likely referring to the incoming threat of Unicorn. Cron. As for what this other way to save Earth could possibly be is still a mystery. But we do know for a fact that the original way they tried must have failed. Now jumping into the next shot, we have this scene of the Beast Wars planet. And we know this since during the scene where Unicron is about to eat the planet, we saw this structure on top of this mountain that points upwards. And here we can clearly see that structure and mountain. Something interesting to point out here is these ships that are heading towards the ground. As for who could be piloting them is unknown. Lastly, it appears that the planet has energon flowing throughout it, which is absolutely sick. With the Beast Wars planet squared off, let's take a look at the next scene where we have an awesome shot of the Autobots and Maximals standing side by side before they charge into battle. From left to right, we have Cheetor, RC, Wheeljack, Optimus Primal, Optimus Prime, and Rhinox. Now, something interesting about Wheeljack is that he has his classic ear fins. This is an iconic trait of his that a lot of us fans thought he wasn't going to have, since in all of his promotional art and toys he didn't sport the ears. So I'm really glad that they will be present in some fashion for Jackie. Hopefully they will light up when he talks just like in the 2018 Bumblebee movie. Moving along we have this shot of Optimus Prime saying he'll let them come as he puts on his battle mask. This is interesting since in the first trailer this scene was flipped and he didn't say anything when he put on his mask. Moving on to the next shot, we have this awesome scene of Unicron destroying what appears to be the Beast planet. And I love how we can see all the Energon gush out the planet as it's destroyed. In the shot after this, we have a scene of Air Razor attacking the Terracons at the museum. If you look closely, we can see Optimus Prime and Bumblebee on the ground, while Scourge, Battletrap, and Nightbird are looking at Air Razor. As for how Air Razor was able to get to New York is unclear to us at this time, but it seems like she's the one responsible for getting Bumblebee and Optimus out of this mess. In the scene after this, we see Elena hanging on to a metal rod as a lava 
lava bubbles below her. As for how she got into this situation, it appears that she dropped her backpack and needs to get it before it falls into the lava. This means that something very important must be in that bag. As for when this scene takes place, I would assume it would be during the final battle, evident by the lava. Now diving into the next scene, we have the shot where RC and Wheeljack are dodging Battletrap's missile. Now, this is a clip that we have seen before. However, the CGI has been updated to have the inside of RC's mouth modeled. And what we see here is nothing new, and is a homage to what the ILM animators did for the first five Transformers movies. You see, to make Dottobots emote and feel lifelike, the ILM animators used a set of rigged pins inside of the Autobots' mouth to simulate a tongue and teeth. It seems like the animators at Motion Picture Company saw this and did the same thing for RC here. And since RC has it, it's likely that the rest of the bots will as well. Now moving along to the next clip, we have this scene of Reek freaking out followed by the scene where Mirage jumps off a ramp which appeared in both the first trailer and Super Bowl trailer. As for why Reek is freaking out here, it might be because he saw Mirage drive off the ramp, but we won't know for sure until the film comes out. After this shot, we have this amazing scene where the Autobots and Maximals are charging into battle. From left to right, we have RC, who is surprisingly in bike mode, Wheeljack, Primal, Prime, Cheetor, and Rhinox. After this shot, it cuts to Primal slamming a Terracon goon into this scorpion. And something that is interesting to note is that there are a ton of these scorpions that make up the Terracon army. Now, whether these scorpions have any connection to the Predacon Scorponok is yet to be seen, but it's possible that this could be the case, since there's a few Scorponok figures being made for the Rise of the Beast toy line. However, we really won't know until the film comes out. Now, another thing to point out in this scene is that this entire sequence is one beautiful continuous shot, which is something we don't get very often for a Transformers movie. Lastly, we can see that Noah has an exosuit and he's fighting off against the Terracons alongside Primal. And the way he gets to the suit is shown to us in the next scene, where Mirage throws what looks like to be car keys at him, which start to form the suit as he catches it. And it will be interesting to see if the glove that Noah had in the first trailer has any connection to this suit. As for who's responsible for building the suit, it's likely that Wheeljack is the culprit. Now something interesting when you listen to the audio for this clip. Yo Noah! take the wheel. It's almost like there's two different voices. We can also see that Mirage clearly says something after take the wheel, but we hear nothing for it. Now moving on to the last and final shot of the trailer, we can see Noah fully suited up and hanging on to Bumblebee. And if you look closely at his suit, it seems to be a mix of kicker suit from Transformers Energon and Spike and Daniel's exosuits from the 86 movie. As for Bumblebee, this scene of him transforming is just awesome. And him grabbing onto the ground as he transforms is definitely a homage to the scene where he grabbed onto the guardrail to escape the cop in the Bumblebee movie. Another thing you can notice with B is that he has his off-road Camaro mode, evident by the new tires, bumpers, side mirrors, and bars on the windshield. Unfortunately, we don't get a clear shot of his robot mode, but for what we can see, his front bumper is now black to match the off-road Camaro, and it looks like he is still missing his Autobot logo. Now, there is a movie mistake that I noticed which has to do with his tires. As you can see, his off-road Camaro has black rims, but when he transforms, the rims turn into the silver ones from a standard Camaro. Hopefully, this mistake is patched by the time the film comes out. Now, the last and final thing I want to touch a base upon is a point that I made in my Trailer 1 breakdown video. In that video, I said we have no clue where Airazor, Bumblebee, and Mirage were at during the final battle. Because of this trailer, we now know that Bumblebee and likely Mirage are on top of this structure. However, Air Razor is still unaccounted for. This could mean one of two things. Either she appears in a scene set in the final battle that we have not seen yet, or she's dead. And this second option seems more likely since we should have gotten a glimpse of her by now. However, we'll all know what happened to her in around a month. And just like that, that was the complete breakdown of the second Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer. If you're up for some more Transformers content, check out this video on the most egregious CGI error that literally nobody talks about.